there, this video is for faculty at Oklahoma City University who want to add what I call a syllabus and a proof of life into their D2L courses. We updated the interface for D2L just a little bit at OCU over the Christmas break. So spring 2018 is the first semester that we have this new environment. And in this video, I'm going to show you specifically in this new environment with this new layout, how you go about adding your syllabus and a little welcome message. So I've started here. I've logged into D2L. It's going to be the same username and password that you have um, to get into the computers and to get into any of your OCU accounts. And then you should be able to find your course here in the My Courses menu. Now, if it doesn't show up here right away, don't freak out. It probably just means that you need to go in and either pin that course or unpin some other courses. And if you need help with doing that, there's a tutorial link right here next to the My Courses area that says Pinning and Unpinning Courses. And if you click on that, it's going to open up a YouTube video. And this, that video will show you all about pinning and unpinning. So I'm going to go ahead and close that little tab. And we'll go back to the fo focus of this video, which is showing you how to upload your syllabus and add a welcome message. So to get to a course, I'm going to go ahead and click on the name of the course. And now what we're seeing here is an out of the box, blank, empty D2L course shell. One other thing you may want to do, and there's another video on this as well, is change what image appears here in this banner. Um, if you go back to the home page, this working with course images link will take you to a tutorial on that specific thing. So know that if you do want to change this to something a little bit more relevant for your course, there's a video on how to do that. So back to adding a syllabus and creating a short news item. Those two things are probably the most common things that students use in D2L. We've done surveys and we know that they use content very, very commonly. So we have it really easy to get to in the new layout. The content browser is right here in the upper left-hand corner. And this is where you're going to put your syllabus. Notice it says there is no content to display. We want to create some content. So we're going to go ahead and click on that link that says create some content. You could also click here on the content link or just on the words content browser. Any one of those things is going to take you to the content area where we'll upload your syllabus. Now the first screen that it's going to take you to in content is the overview and it seems kind of intuitive that you might put your syllabus here. I actually wouldn't recommend it because this overview doesn't show up here back here in the content browser area and that's where students go a lot to get to their content. So I would actually, when we go back to the content area, I would ignore this overview area and instead we're going to add a syllabus module. So you're going to look on the left hand side where it says the words add a module. You're going to click in that box. You're going to name this module whatever you want. Now, if you're just putting up your syllabus, I would recommend calling it syllabus. But if you're going to put up a few other documents, you may want to call it something else. For now, we'll just call it syllabus. And then you want to hit the enter or the return key. Now we've created essentially a folder in D2L where we can actually upload the document. Now you'll notice it says drag and drop files here to create and update topics. That is probably going to be the easiest way that you can add your file. Okay, I've got another window here that I'm just going to drag onto my screen. And you can see that I have a sample syllabus file that I can upload. So if you've got your file in another window, all you need to do is go ahead and click it and then drag it into this area and you want to make sure that you see kind of that line fill in and the box kind of highlights and once you have it there you can drop it and that's all you need to do to add your syllabus. Now if clicking and dragging isn't working for you, maybe you're on a laptop, there are other ways you can get your syllabus added. If you go to this new blue button and you click on the drop down arrow, the very first option is going to say upload files. If I click on that, it's going to ask you where do you want to upload the files from. Chances are you want to upload it from my computer. And then it's another screen where I could drop that file or I can click the upload button. And then I'll have to go onto the screen, find the file that I want, hit open. I'll see it appears there and then click add. Now, you normally won't see this little error message, but it's worth pointing out because I have already created a sample syllabus file, I uploaded the one by clicking and dragging, and I'm trying to re-add the same file. It's asking me what I want to do with this. A good rule of thumb is if you're planning on uploading multiple files, you want to make sure that they each have a different file name. For now, I'm just going to say overwrite the existing file because this is just for practice anyway. So now that overwrote the file that I had there, but it just does the same effect. So I can either drag the file that I have into this area or go new, 
upload a file and follow the prompts to add in my syllabus. One tip that I would give you is if you have links in your syllabus, for example, websites that you want students to visit or an email address, I would strongly recommend uploading it as a PDF as opposed to a Word document or something else. And the reason is when you have a PDF, even though there are no links on here, the links are actually clickable. So that means students can click right there and not have to download the document to be able to get to the link. So that's just a tip. If you've got links in your syllabus, I would upload it as a PDF. So now I'm going to go ahead and click back on Course Home. And you're going to notice that right here in the content browser, if I click on the word syllabus, now students can get to that syllabus right there on the home page. It's really, really handy. The last thing I would recommend that you do is that we create a basic news item. This is what I call proof of life. This is just letting students know, hey, I've uploaded something into this course. This is how this course is going to work. Whatever sort of basic information you want to give them. So I'm going to click create a news item. And then you can think of this news item kind of as a general email. If you send out a welcome to class email the week before classes start, you could essentially just recreate that email here in this new item. So I'm just going to say welcome to class. And then in this content area, different things you could put. Obviously, you might want to put your name, class time, meeting space, maybe your contact information, basically anything you want students to know. And when you're all done, you go, can go ahead and click Publish. This takes me to a news item summary page. You can actually create as many news items as you want, and some people like to do maybe weekly updates and things like that. But if you just want to do this for a place to house your syllabus, all you really need is a basic news item that says, welcome to class, here's what's going on, look at your syllabus for more information. And we've got that syllabus link right there. So just to sum up, we've gone into a D2L course, we've gone to content, we've created a module, we've uploaded our syllabus into that module, we've gone back to course home, and then we've created a simple news item. This has everything that our students need for that basic class right at the top of the page, and you are good to go for the semester.